All right, guys, uh, we're going to start trying to do this after each tournament. Um, hopefully, like, day after or whatever, um, if I can remember to do it. So, we hit the Potomac River on uh, May 13th or 12th, day before Mother's Day. Um, good water temperatures, you know, 60, mid, high 60s and the 70s, depending on where we were at. Um, clarity was, eh, it's the same as the Potomac River, it wasn't. The water I found wasn't real clear. Um, the grass is starting to move in, and the fish are, are locating themselves in their spawning areas. Um, my weigh-in results do not do the day justice. Um, 30, 40 fish all day long. I mean, we, we were we were slaying them. Um, we were in a creek, uh, Chickamauxon, for the majority of the day. Uh, the fish were just loaded there um the problem was they all were 14 inch and i had a couple that were would have squeaked to 15 but they had some deformity with their tail um so it was just it's just one of those things and i did catch a you know the two fish that you saw i did catch there in the chick um including that big one um practice the day before i caught two four pounders um in there and they were doing the same stuff they're chasing bait Pin and bait against the grass, and then when the tide was out, and just having a field day. I mean, we we were around 40 or 50 bait balls, and the bass were just killing them. So I wanted to show you what I was using um, to get to get my bites. I, I tried flipping and finessing and and all that, and I didn't get any. And usually that's that's my go-to. So on practice, during practice, I was using. Um, it's a white spinnerbait by EcoPro, um, a 3 8 ounce. I literally threw this to isolated grass um, near the channel, but not in the channel. So it was still in about a foot and a half of water, and they loaded up on it. I mean, it wasn't an issue. I had two, um, two and a half pounders catch it right at the boat. Um, I mean, I was getting ready to bring it in, and they were on it. And, Got them, but uh, nothing special about it. Um, it is an Inco Pro tungsten um, white spinner bait. I'm sure they have a. I can't remember what their special name is for it, but it's by Eco Pro. And see if you can see it, just so people I always say they don't believe I use this stuff. But mm, I don't know if you can see it. We'll try it. It says Eco Pro on it, but um, that's what we were using. I tried it on tournament day and I had a couple hits on it, but I didn't have anything uh, commit. Um, I did have a snakehead hook up, hooked up on it. Thank God I was able to get it back. Um, I wouldn't have mind landing the snakehead, but it, it just didn't happen. I let it go. I didn't get a good setup or something, but uh, good little bait to have. Um, I fished that on vicious 12 pound test line on a Denali signature series. Um, seven four medium heavy rod and i was using the uh quantum pulse reel um seemed to work i'm sure there's other combinations that people will do and that's them this seems to work for me tournament day however was a different story um i went into it trying top water i tried finessing i tried frogs i tried everything and then a buddy of mine taught me down in alabama that I should be using these more often, little swim baits again, um, by EcoPro. Um, Albino Shad, I believe, is the color. It's like a gray or blue, gray, and white in the four and a half inch. Um, I didn't try anything smaller than that. Um, I only had four of these, and there's a lot more to that that came off. Um, I was trying to alter them to save them as best I could to use them throughout the day, but my big fish came on that. The other one I was using was a lure we got in Alabama, and I don't remember who makes them. Um, but it's a kind of a hollow-bodied swim bait. When they stopped biting on the Eco Pro, I switched to this, um, and this is—it's a bluegill color. Um, they, they were crushing this, doing the same thing. Um, again, the the weigh-in results don't do my day justice. Um, my thumbs are raw. Uh, 30 or 40 fish easily out of the chick. Um, 
it's fishing. That's what happens. I needed a bigger bite. I was trying to go for it, so I was using bigger lures. And I, I guess I could have done a lot differently, but I didn't. So I stuck with my game plan, and that's what it was. Um, that was fished on a covert, finale covert rod um, with heavy braid. And it's the uh, worm and jig rod, and I know it's not ideal for that, but it's because it was heavy. What I knew I was going to be pitching that thing in seven two, seven foot two. I knew I was going to be pitching up into thick grass at that point, so I wanted to make sure I had something to get him out with. Um, later in the day, we moved from the chick. I mean, we, we debated, me and my co-angler really, really debated leaving those fish, because I've always taught, you don't leave fish to find fish, but we couldn't get them to commit anymore. And the ones that were committing were 14 inches, so it wasn't doing us any good. So I made the decision to move over to Marsh Island, which is around Mata Woman. Um, so I would say park area and I knew we were going to be fishing in lily pads so I picked up my flipping stuff and I did have two good fish on um, and we saw one it's probably like three and a half four pounds the other one we didn't see um, but we're fishing lily pads and, and the lure I was using there was a wacky rig a wacky Cinco um, so when you catch big fish with the itty bitty hook it, it takes a lot and the first one was totally my fault I didn't realize the slack in my line had got, gone out and wasn't paying attention. And by the time I realized what was going on, I missed the hook set. And I literally watched the fish shake the lure. You live and you learn. Um, I had a great co-angler. Uh, Howard Libs is a, is a fantastic guy. Um, we had a lot of fun that day, busting each other's chops. We have similar interests, so it, was, it made it very easy. Um, he was able to catch two fish. Um, this is his first ram open, so hopefully he comes back. Hopefully I didn't curse him. But the story, I guess the the end of the story should be the fact that, you know, the one lesson that I've learned through the season is that nothing replaces time on the water. Um, you can go off historical data and look at maps and do all kinds of stuff, but if you don't put the time on the water, you're not going to find the fish in the current positions where they're at currently. Um, we've had a crazy end of the winter that never let go, and then we had a crazier spring that just didn't seem like we had a spring. It went from... 30 degrees to 80 degrees. I mean, I'm out here sweltering. Where a couple weeks ago, we were bundled up. So, we've got one more tournament with the Ram Open Series, and I think I'm going to pick up a couple of the ABA American Tour, um, which is the fun draw, 70 bucks, um, just to get more time on the water. Um, I owe it to myself. I'm a much better angler than what my results are showing. Um, I've got some mechanical stuff I have to get through with this boat, including a trim tab motor that just went up. I've got to fix, permanently fix the trolling motor cord because I can't be pulling a nine foot cord to get the trolling motor in, but we'll get all that taken care of before the second and hopefully get on the upper bay and, and, and knock it out of here. So, um, I think that's it guys. You know, that's a wrap on, on the last Potomac. Um, I'll try to do these more often. They'll get posted unedited. Um, so sometimes you'll see me drink beer. Sometimes you'll hear me cuss. I apologize. It's just me. So... Tune in. Let me know if there's something else you guys want to see or if I can do better at something. So, all right, guys.